Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. So glad that you could join me here today. My name is Heidi Roth, and I'm a registered dietitian. And our program today is dips and salsas. So we're going to be making three things today. We'll be making a fruit dip to put on top of something like grilled fish or grilled chicken or maybe some grilled tofu. We'll also be making a homemade branch dip. And then um, for dessert, we'll be making a yogurt dip. Um, as usual, I have opened up the chat box. So please feel free to use a chat box to ask questions, comments. Uh, you won't be able to unmute yourself, but it's nice to still have that interaction um, while we're talking. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so if you see me looking down, I'm just looking to see if there's any questions from anyone so far. Uh, so let's get started. We're gonna start off with one of my favorite salsas, which is a fruit salsa. Um, and this, today we're gonna to be using um, some mango for this salsa, but you could really use any fruit, it would be lovely with this. You could use some peaches, um, plums, pineapple, whatever you have, strawberries, whatever you have on hand. Uh, so we're gonna start off with some mango and we're looking for about one, one ripe mango. Um, the mango I have here is a smaller mango. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to cut one of the, the smaller mangoes. And I already have one cut. So I'm actually gonna use like one and a half since it's one of the smaller mangoes. So if you don't know how to cut a mango or it's been a while, they're really easy to cut. But what you have to remember is a mango has a really flat seed um, it's super skinny. So what you want to do is you want to find the end of the mango and come out about a quarter of the inch and you're just going to cut straight down flush against the seed. And I can see here I'm kind of touching the seed a little bit. And then I'm just going to come around on the other side and do the same thing. Now you don't want to waste any of your mango. So you can also take your knife and kind of do some little diagonal cuts here. Um, and you'll feel when you're, you're kind of touching the seed. The hard part is, is that you don't, sometimes they're kind of oddly shaped and you don't always know exactly where it's gonna be. But um, for the most part, all of this is gonna be seed and I'll throw that out. Um, and then what you can do is you take a spoon, take my spoon here, and what I like to do is I just come along and I kind of scoop the whole thing out. And you just go right along the skin and scoop the whole thing out. It's just a really quick and easy way. Then you've got the skin and you throw it out and you're all set. So we're gonna dice our mango about a quarter inch dice, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, so to get a quarter inch dice, if you want a smaller dice, what you can do is kind of just cut it in half like that and then put it down and dice it around, dice it again. And you know, whatever kind of fruit you have would be really good with this. Okay, so we'll put that in here and we'll save, we'll save the rest of this. Um, for later. So I'm actually going to put this in a bowl and get this out of the way. Um, and don't forget, ask if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the chat box. Um, so the next thing that we'll add to this, it's going to be your typical ma uh, mango fruit salsa. So we will add a little bit of tomatoes as well. So it's gonna be mostly fruit, but we'll add some tomatoes. I have here a half a cup of diced tomatoes. And if you want, you can seed them, but the seeds add a lot of flavor to it. So I usually don't take the seeds out, but you can if you want. And then we'll add in about a quarter cup of diced scallions, chopped scallions. You could also use red onion. Red onion would be lovely as well. 
Um, and if you don't aren't crazy about the taste of onion and it's maybe sometimes a little bit too strong for you, one of the things that I like to do is I soak the onion in some water and then drain it and for about 10 minutes or so. And that really kind of makes the onion a lot more mild and um, takes away a little bit of the bite with, with the onions. So I'm gonna add in my quarter cup of scallion. And then the last thing I'll add in terms of the main ingredients is some cilantro. Anybody know what cilantro is good for? If you do, put it in the chat box. Um, so cilantro is, I know it's one of those things that people either love or hate. Um, I'm in the camp where I love it. And you'll see that cilantro actually has these long stems. Some people, you know, kind of laboriously pick off all of the leaves and, you know, that's fine. Um, but I think that the, the stems actually provide quite a bit of flavor and a little bit of crunch as well. So I typically then just leave them on. So when I chop my cilantro, I kind of just, you know, get it into a little bunch here. Um, take your knife and kind of just rock it back and forth. Um, now make sure your fingers are kind of in that claw position so that you're not getting your fingers in there. And then you can also just take it and kind of some smaller pieces as well. Um, so the recipe calls for about a quarter cup of cilantro. I love cilantro. There's no such thing as too much cilantro for me. So I'm going to put in all of the little bit of cilantro I have here. It's probably closer to um, a quarter, or excuse me, a half a cup. Uh, so I didn't see any answers in what cilantro is good for, um, but cilantro is full of lots of antioxidants and um, some vitamins, a little bit of vitamin A, vitamin C. But one of the main things that cilantro is good for is that it's very helpful for supporting your liver um, for detoxification. So it's a great uh, liver support. So that's, that's one of the many reasons why cilantro is, is good for you. Um, but you know, if you're of the camp where you don't like cilantro, that's fine. You can just add in some parsley instead um, would, be, would be lovely as well. Or some basil would be nice too. Um, you could certainly add that. So um, th there's lots of, lots of different choices there. Okay. So now I'm going to add in one tablespoon of olive oil. And in this case, the olive oil is going to add in a little bit more flavor. It's gonna kind of um, just help the flavors to, to blend a little bit. I'm looking for my tablespoon measurement here. Well, one of the things that olive oil also does is that it helps you to absorb all of the antioxidants that are in the vegetables. Um, and so a little bit of fat helps with the absorption of different antioxidants, especially things like beta carotene and lycopene from the tomatoes. So having some fat in there is, is a good thing. So I'm just gonna use a tablespoon of my extra virgin olive oil, whatever brand that you like. In there. And then, I'm going to add in a quarter cup of freshly squeezed orange juice. And then also a little bit of lime juice as well. So I have two limes here. Um, and limes, like everything else, seem to be getting a little bit more expensive. So you want to get the most out of your lime as you possibly can. When you're looking for a lime, look for a lime with a really smooth skin and the round of the lime, the better. Um, the round kind of smooth skin limes tend to have more juice in them and a little bit less peel. So you'll get more bang for your buck there. Now, another way also to kind of get more bang for your buck is to roll the lime a little bit. Um, you can also pop it into the microwave for about 10 to 20 seconds, also works well. Um, but what this does is it breaks up some of the plant cell walls and you also get more juice out of it. So those are two different things that you can do just to get a little bit more juice out of your lime. Um, so we're gonna do juice of half of a lime. I've got my handy little juicer here. These stainless steel juicers are like 15 bucks on Amazon and 
I love it. I use it all the time. It's nice, especially if you have quite a few lines to juice, if you're making something that requires more than, than just one, one line, um, it's really nice to have. All right. So get the juice out of there. And then put this aside. A stir. Um, and now we can also add in just some salt and pepper. So I'll add in roughly about a quarter teaspoon of sea salt. I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit on. Um, and then I'll taste it. Some pepper. And then you can add some form of heat as well. So with the heat, you could do something like Tabasco sauce. You could chop up a jalapeno. Um, it really kind of depends whatever you like, you like best. I'm actually gonna add in a little bit of the Cholula hot sauce. And you know, you could add some sriracha, whatever, whatever you like. So I'm just gonna kind of put a little bit of that in. And then taste it and see, see how, how it is. You always want to kind of taste before you serve things taste it and then that way you kind of know does it need more salt does it need more pepper um what kind of what does it need and this kind of gets better with a with let it uh, sit in the fridge for a couple um you know half an hour or so mm. that's good perfect um now if you wanted to you could also serve this as a salad and you could add in a can of drained black beans. Um, so it can kind of be a salsa, it could be a little bit of a side salad. Um, you know, either way would be, would be delicious. So I'm gonna here, I'll put this in our serving dish and we'll have our first thing that's made, which will be our fruit salsa. And there you go. Isn't that beautiful? Um, it's really delicious. It's sweet and spicy and salty all at the same time. So um, all the things that we like. So grilled fish, grilled chicken. Um, I grill a pork tenderloin. I put a spice rub on a pork tenderloin and then I serve this on top of the grilled pork tenderloin with the spice rub. It's really, really good. Uh, for vegetarian option, you could do grilled halloumi and grilled halloumi is a grilled it's cheese that you can actually put right on the grill and it keeps its shape. Um, it comes, I believe, from Cyprus and, and um, it's also a Lebanese cheese. So that would be good. You could grill some tofu um, for a more plant-based option. So lots of different options that this would be good on. Okay, so um, let's see. Okay, I see everybody helped. Uh, I'm just looking to see if we have any questions. What's best, putting the lime face down or up in the squeezer? Okay, so somebody asked, put the lime face down or up in the squeezer. That's a really good question. I don't know, everyone can chime in. I always put it face down um, so that the juice comes straight out, but I guess you could try it with it up um, and you know, maybe put it sideways. That actually might work really well too. So we'll have to try that way. Um, it does have holes at the bottom of it to kind of catch the, the, um, the seeds. Let's see if any other questions. Um, okay, so I see somebody asked a question about the ingredients. So just to review, we've got one mango, half a cup of um, tomato, a quarter cup of either scallions or red onion, a quarter cup of, of cilantro, and then one tablespoon of olive oil, um, as well as a little bit of hot sauce, salt and pepper. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be making a homemade ranch dressing. And ranch dressing, you know, if you Google ranch dressing to make your own homemade ranch dressing, there's a lot of fancy recipes out there that use fresh herbs and garlic which is all well and good and wonderful, but the original ranch dressing, which was um, originated in the 1950s, 
with a, a contractor who was doing some work up in Alaska and he didn't have access to fresh herbs and spices and all that. And so he used dried herbs and spices. Afterwards, they moved to um, a ranch in California and they called it Hidden Valley and that's where you get Hidden Valley Ranch. So the true ranch dressing, the original ranch dressing used all dried herbs. Now this is great because it makes it really super easy and convenient for you to make your own kind of ranch dressing mix to keep on hand in storage. And then all you have to do is add in um, some either sour cream or um, buttermilk. Uh, we're actually gonna use kefir instead and then some mayonnaise um, instead of sour cream if you want to. All right, so what are we gonna put in here? We're gonna start off with one tablespoon of dried onion. And so basically, We've got some sort of some form of herb, some form of onions, and then the, the tang from the, from the buttermilk. So one tablespoon of dried onion, and then we're going to do one teaspoon of dried garlic. My dried garlic in. Now you can see a lot of my spices are Penzi spices. Um, that's for two reasons. Penzi spices, I can walk to. So it's literally right around the corner um, and it's super, um, super convenient. They also, the other reason that I use Penzi's is that they're just a really nice high quality spice company. Uh, so if you're in Arlington, come by and visit. Um, but if not, you can also order a lot of their spices online. And um, they have a lot of nice sales and promotions and things like that. So now I'm going to use some dried chives. These are air dried, freeze dried chives. And they're kind of just a really lovely thing to have on hand, especially in the middle of winter when you don't have access to any fresh chives. So one and a half teaspoon of dried chives. Um, and if you don't have these or can't find them in the store, just leave them out. Um, you know, that, that'll be fine. And then one teaspoon of dried parsley. So we'll put that in and get that nice green flakes that you see in the buttermilk um, dressing. Um, and then one teaspoon of dill. I love dill. Um, it's one of my favorite herbs. Okay, so one teaspoon of dill. Now, if you open up your spices, and you can't smell anything, um, it might mean it's because it's old and it's lost a lot of those volatile acids that give a lot of the, um, the flavor and aroma to your spices. So it might just mean that it's time to replace it. Um, these things, you know, they last quite a while in your cabinet, but not forever. Uh, then we're going to add in one teaspoon of salt. So I'll add my salt and then a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. There we go. So now, there you go, voila. You, know, you can put it in your little container, how, whatever type of container that you want, and um, then you kind of just give it a shake or you can stir it up. And then when you're ready to make your ranch dressing, you can go to your pantry, grab your ranch dressing mix, and we're gonna add in one tablespoon of the ranch dressing mix. I don't know what happened to all my tablespoon <laughs> measures. I swear I got it out. All right, so I'm just gonna use this. Um, so one tablespoon of the mix, and you kind of want to stir it around to kind of make sure you get a little bit of everything when you do the tablespoon. So that's about one tablespoon. And then you can either add sour cream or mayonnaise. So I'm going to add actually half a cup of the, um, this is an avocado mayonnaise. I've been using the avocado mayonnaise lately. I really, really like it. Um, and so grab my half a cup of mayonnaise. Um, and if you wanted to, you could use sour cream instead of mayonnaise. That would be fine too. Um, the original recipe actually used mayonnaise. I think they used Miracle Whip. 
um, I'm not, I'm not going to use Miracle Whip, but I do like the, the, um, the avocado mayonnaise. And then you can either use buttermilk or I actually have kefir. This is, oh, it's kind of bright. I don't know if you can see, this is a um, plain unsweetened kefir. And what's nice about this, this is actually a different type of cultured fermented milk as well. So where buttermilk is a cultured milk, kefir is also fermented as well. But what's nice is it has 12 different types of beneficial um, probiotics in it. So it's kind of like, you know, yogurt on steroids for lack of a better word. Um, I just use it for baking, for whatever I might use buttermilk for, I tend to use this. And you can also just pour yourself a glass and drink it, which I do as well, um, which is, it's quite lovely. So um, either half a cup of unsweetened plain kefir or buttermilk, either one, and then just kind of take your whisk, give it a nice stir. And now, if you want this as a dip and you want it to be, you know, a little bit thicker, you know, since our topic today is dips, right? Uh, what you could do is you could add some sour cream. It's actually perfect now as a dip, um, depending on how thin or, or thick you wanted it. Um, you could add some more sour cream to it, or you could add less buttermilk to it as well so that it was a little bit thicker. If you want it as a ranch dressing, then you could also just kind of um, add more buttermilk and make it a little thinner too, depending on, on what worked for you. So there we go. We've got our ranch dressing there and that's the closest approximation to the original one. Um, I guess without using the Miracle Whip that was used in the middle in the original one, but I'm sure um, Hellman's mayonnaise would work, work fine too. Okay, so that's our dip for our vegetables. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a yogurt dip for our fruit. I see we have a question here. Somebody said, um, oh, was there a non-dairy option? Yes, I meant to tell everyone about that. Okay, so the avocado oil is not is going to be non-dairy, um, but it does have egg yolks in it. So you would have to get a vegan mayonnaise if you wanted to do complete um, plant-based. So get a vegan mayonnaise. And then there's a lot of cultured kefirs that are made from all, that are made from, let's see, cashew milk um, is the main one that I've seen, but there's a lot of kind of plant-based options for the kefir as well. So just use one of those and you could very easily make that um, into, you know, a, a vegan uh, buttermilk dressing. So that's probably what I would do or even just skip the mayonnaise altogether and use 100% vegan. Uh, now what we're going to, the last thing that we're gonna do is we're going to be making a yogurt dip for, um, to, for fruit. So with this, once again, there are so many vegan options now for different types of yogurt. You could use a soy yogurt, you could use a cashew yogurt. Um, there's also vegan versions of sour cream. So use, you know, your favorite type that, that you kind of usually substitute with um, if you are going to make this into a plant-based option. Okay, so with this dip, this is something that we make a lot around our house. Um, if we either make it as a dip or we also make it as a sauce. And um, in our house, uh, it's, it's, special sauce, you know, other than yogurt dip, you know, it's always the kids when they were little would ask me, mom, can you make me some special sauce? And either the kids would dip some fruit into it, or we would drizzle it over, you know, frozen blueberries in the winter time. And so this was kind of always something that we kind of always kept in the fridge, just as, you know, always kind of a go-to for, you know, a special little treat. So um, because this was kind of something that I guess to some extent, you know, it's not that original, but we kind of made it up here at home. Uh, there's really no hard and fast recipe for it. Basically it's one part yogurt to one part sour cream. 
So with this, I'm using a 2% fat Greek yogurt, and I'm gonna use about a quarter cup, uh, a little bit more, maybe like a third a cup of the yogurt. And since it's one to one, third cup of the sour cream. And if you don't have sour cream, then just use 100% yogurt. And that, that would work very well also. So we have that. And then we also have um, some brown sugar and vanilla and that's it. And it's super quick and easy and it's really, really delicious. So the trick is using the brown sugar. Um, the brown sugar is really kind of gives it a nice molasses taste, but certainly if you were trying to use, you know, even cleaner sugars, I guess for lack of a better word, some honey would be lovely as well, or some pure maple syrup. Uh, so I'm gonna add in a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. And once again, if you have a little bit more yogurt and uh, sour cream, add a little bit more vanilla extract, you know, if you're using more than a third cup. But, um, you know, you really can't go wrong with this. And then we'll add in one tablespoon of brown sugar. The brown sugar is really kind of what makes what makes this, I think, because it has kind of that molasses taste to it. But you know, use use what you have. You can use a little bit more brown sugar if you like a little bit sweeter. You can use a little bit less if you're really trying to cut down on sugar. Um, and then just kind of stir it all together. Put it, we're gonna put it into our bowl in the middle. And this is really especially good with strawberries. It's delicious with strawberries. I'll put it into my pretty serving bowl in the center. There we go, get it all in there. Well, there we go. We find a nice little small strawberry here and we'll taste it. Mm. Super quick and easy and really yummy. And, you know, when you don't worry about, you know, measuring everything out exactly, um, it's meant to be a really easy recipe to throw together. So when things are easier to do, you're more likely to do it. So whatever it takes to make things really super quick and easy to throw together um, is always a great thing to do. Let's see, I think I might have one last question here. Um, oh, okay. Somebody says, I use Good Culture cottage cheese and they make sour cream as well. Yeah, so if anyone is looking for a lactose-free version of um, sour cream, this is a nice lactose-free. And what I like about this one is that they do raise the animals on pasture. Um, and it's just a really, um, you know, nice uh, sour cream. So um, any other questions or comments? We've got our fruit dip, our ranch dressing, and then also our fruit salsa. So I um, hope you all have a wonderful summer and get a chance to kind of do some nice cooking and, and make something nice for yourself. I think I might see here um, another question. Um, all right. Well, thank you all for your kind words. I'm so glad that you could join me today and um, hope you have a really great, great summer. Thank you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>